Welcome. I am a lay Shin Buddhist who nevertheless maintains an interest in the broader realm of Pure Land and Mahayana Buddhist teachings. My YouTube channel is called Akala Akala, that is A-C-A-L-A, A-C-A-L-A. -A -A. In these podcasts, I make a non-scholarly, humble, and sometimes bumbling attempt to explore a particular topic or question related to the wonderful Buddha Dharma. I hope you find them to be of interest. With that said, let us begin. So, as most Shin Buddhists will know, Nagarjuna, the great sage, from the early days of Mahayana Buddhism, he is considered to be the first patriarch of Shin Buddhism. And the reason that Shinran identified him as such is because he first articulated the differentiation between the difficult path or the path of sages versus the easy path, which essentially involves reliance upon the Buddha. And in these following verses, he focuses particularly on Amida Buddha and his praise and worship of that Buddha of inconceivable light. Namo Amida Buddha. The primal vow of Amida Buddha is, If one takes refuge in me while being mindful of me and saying my name, one immediately enters the stage of the definitely settled and will attain the highest perfect enlightenment. Therefore, one should always be mindful of the Buddha. I will praise the Buddha in verse. O oh, Amida Buddha! the wisdom of immeasurable light whose body is like pure gold mountain. I now worship you in body, speech, and mind by placing my hands together and bowing my head. Your wondrous golden light universally reaches every world, strengthening your light according to each object, and so I bow my head in worship. When, at the end of one's life, one attains birth in that land, one will immediately acquire innumerable virtues, and so I take refuge in Amida Buddha. When one is mindful of the Buddha's infinite power and majestic virtue, one immediately enters the stage of the definitely settled, and so I am always mindful of Amida Buddha. When one's life comes to an end in that land, even if one were to undergo various sufferings, one would not fall into the evil realm of hell. And so I take refuge in and worship Amida Buddha. Once born in that land, one will never again fall into the three evil realms or the realm of Asuras. And so I now take refuge in and worship Amida Buddha. The humans and divas there, all alike in physical features, are as magnificent as the summit of Gold Mountain. That land is the place where all superior ones take refuge. And so I bow my head and worship Amida Buddha. When one is born in that land, one possesses the divine eyes and ears to penetrate freely throughout the ten quarters. And so I worship Amida Buddha, the most honored one among sages. All sentient beings in that land possess divine feet, the power to see into the minds of others, and the wisdom to remember all former lives. And so I take refuge in and worship Amida Buddha. When one is born in that land, one is freed of attachment to self and possessions and does not give rise to any discrimination between self and others. And so I bow my head and worship Amida Buddha. Having transcended the prison of the three worlds, one has eyes like lotus petals. There are innumerable such shravakas in that land, and so I bow my head and worship Amida Buddha. All the sentient beings in that land are gentle and tender in nature and effortlessly perform the ten good acts, and so I bow my head to Amida Buddha, the king of sages. Such beings generating pure brightness out of these good acts are immeasurable and unlimited in number. Amida is the most exalted one among humans and divas, and so I take refuge in Amida Buddha. If one aspires to attain Buddhahood and thinks on Amida in one's mind, the Buddha will then appear before one, and so I take refuge in Amida Buddha. 
Through the power of the Buddha's primal vow, the Bodhisattvas in the Ten Quarters come to Amida's land to make offerings and listen to the Dharma. And so I bow my head to Amida Buddha. The Bodhisattvas of that land all possess the auspicious characteristics and marks which spontaneously adorn their bodies, and so I now take refuge in and worship Amida Buddha. All the great Bodhisattvas in that land make offerings three times each day to every Buddha in the Ten Quarters, and so I bow my head and worship Amida Buddha. If one doubts the Buddha's power while planting roots of good, the lotus flower in which one is born will not open. For one whose entrusting heart is pure, however, the flower opens and then one sees the Buddha. The Buddhas of the present in the ten quarters, each relating various ways and means, praise the virtue of that Buddha. And so I now take refuge in and worship Amida Buddha. That land is most splendidly adorned, surpassing all the palaces of divas. Amida's virtue is extremely deep and vast. And so I bow to the feet of Amida Buddha. His soles have the mark of the thousand-spoked wheel and are soft and tinged with lotus color. Anyone who sees it rejoices and so I bow my head to the feet of Amida Buddha. The light emitted from the white tuft of hair on his brow is pure and clear, like that of the full moon, and enhances the light and color of his complexion, and so I bow my head to the feet of Amida Buddha. When he was seeking the way to enlightenment, he achieved many rare and wonderful accomplishments, as stated in various sutras, and so I bow my head and worship Amida Buddha. When the Buddha is preaching the Dharma, all the roots of karmic evil are eliminated. His expositions are full of beautiful and beneficial words, and so I now bow my head and worship Amida Buddha. By preaching in such beautiful words, he cures the disease of people's attachment to pleasure, thus saving them in the past and present. And so I bow my head and worship Amida Buddha. As the most honored one among humans and divas, all divas bow their heads in worship, with their seven jewel crowns touching his feet. And so I take refuge in Amida Buddha. All the wise sages, as well as the multitudes of humans and divas, take refuge in him together. And so I too worship Amida Buddha. Riding aboard the ship of the Eightfold Path, he ferries us across the ocean difficult to cross. Having crossed it himself, he now carries us across. And so I worship Amida Buddha, the one whose power is unrestricted. Even if all the Buddhists were to praise Amida's virtues for innumerable kalpas, they would be unable to do so fully. And so I take refuge in Amida Buddha, the one of purity. Now, in this way, I extol Amida's immeasurable virtues. Through the merits of this praise, may the Buddha constantly think of me. With all the good and virtues, whether great or small, that I acquired in my present and previous lives, may I be in the presence of Amida Buddha and my heart be constantly pure. With the most wondrous merit I have acquired through praising Amida's virtues, may all sentient beings be endowed with the same merit as I have been. With that, I will sign off by reciting the Nembutsu in gratitude for being embraced and accepted just as I am by Amida Buddha, never, never to be abandoned. Namo Amida Buts. Namo Amida Buts. Namo Amida Buts. Thank you.